If you follow certain online forums and subreddits, you may have seen many threads where people talk about their PC spontaneously catching fire. In almost all of these that I've seen, it's been caused by one thing, and that is dodgy, cheap Molex SATA connectors. Now, the problem isn't inherent to the Molex SATA adapter, so there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is that many of these adapters are really cheap and use dodgy, moulded SATA connectors rather than proper crimped ones. There seems to be a design flaw with these moulded adapters, where they can sort of just overheat and then catch fire, and when they do it, they sort of melt completely and produce loads of black soot and make a complete mess of the machine. And it seems to be quite a common problem, it's not just like a one-off thing, There's, it seems to be an inherent design flaw to these types of connectors. Recently, I took apart my home server, which is a Fujitsu Primer G TX1310 M1. I did a video about this sort of just over a year ago, and I was just going in to replace a broken hard drive, and found that it too uses a few of these dodgy moulded SATA adapters. Now, this isn't something that I've installed, I didn't buy these connectors, this is what it came like from the factory. And... You know, I left it for a little while and thought, I'm sure it's fine, you know, Fujitsu know what they're doing, you know, it's not going to burst into flames, but I thought, I just don't trust it. It's, you know, it's getting annoying just having this sort of risk there. So I decided I'm going to replace that, so that's what I'm going to do now. So in this video, I'll be taking the machine apart, taking out any of those moulded SATA connectors, and replacing them with proper crimped ones. So first of all, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. So here we have the machine, and we'll pop the side off, and we'll fight, look at the connectors that we're needing to replace. So here we can see all the drive bays in the machine. So you can see these two up here are absolutely fine, they use proper crimped SATA connectors. The problem is with these three down here, which use the moulded type. And it's weird because they're all actually on the same cable, this cable goes down and then suddenly goes from nice safe crimped connectors into the cheap moulded ones. I think it must just be because these have to be right angled and they've just found these are a cheaper way of doing it. Or the only way of doing it maybe. So these are the connectors here that need to replace, so there's three along the bottom. So what we'll now do is take a look at how we're going to replace this. So we're now taking a closer up look at the dodgy SATA connectors. So you can see these here, there's these two right angled ones which are sort of like that and the cables feed in and then come back out again and go into the next one so it changes around to this one and then finally it ends up in this one. Now I've not seen any of this sort of right angle type sort of melt or catch fire before but they're probably a much less common type, I've never seen these outside of this machine. However this is the type here that I've seen many of them sort of catch fire or people reporting them anyway. Including these Amphenol branded ones, that brand has had many reports of these catching fire. So these are all Amphenol branded and even though these are the right angle ones that I haven't seen before, I just don't trust them and I don't want them in the machine. So these connectors are going to be replaced. So let's see how we're going to replace this. So what I've done is I went out and bought a Molex SATA adapter. Now I know what you're thinking because most of these fires are caused by Molex SATA adapters but I made sure to get a decent one with crimp connectors. So this is an Akasa one. It was only about £2 or something from Scan. It was fairly cheap. And the key thing is it met both the requirements I had. The requirements I had were, first of all, it had to be long enough in between these two connectors where they could fit between the two drives like that. It also had to use proper crimped connectors, not dodgy um, moulded ones. And both connectors had to be right angled so it would fit in to the drives like this. And this one fit the bill perfectly. So of course if you're buying this, make sure you get one that does have the crimped connectors. Don't because most of these adapters do just have the dodgy moulded ones. So the whole point of buying this specific adapter was that it was crimped. So yeah, this is what we're going to be adding. So the plan is going to be to cut this cable that feeds these further up the machine and then fit on this just standard female Molex connector. So that will go on there and we'll now have a Molex connector sitting inside the machine about, around about here. What I'll then be able to do is just plug this, SATA adapter, this Molex SATA adapter in and link the drives up. So that should be fairly simple. Okay, so I've now disconnected all the old cables and moved them out of the way. They were just sort of clipped through a couple of little clips here. And what we'll now do is we'll go to install the adap new adapter and just see how it's going to fit. So the plan's going to be that we've got the one end, we've got the end that goes to Molex and then goes through the SATA connector. I'm going to install that on the left-hand drive, just so it's sort of the Molex connector is nearest to the where the cable's going to go to it. And then what's going to happen is the other end of this is going to plug into this drive. Now you'll notice that the way the cables are ori oriented here. The, it means that the wires going to this connector come in against the side of the case but these connectors are really easy to take apart so what I'm going to try and do is take this one apart and reverse it so the wires actually go in from this side and it'll just be a bit neater so the wires come in here in to this connector like normal but then they come out and then back into here just so it's only one connector is pressed up against the side just because it makes it a little bit fiddly to get out when these wires are over here so what we'll do is we'll go and modify that connector now and then we'll look into how we're going to install it into the machine Okay, so we now have the connector here, so we can rewire this. So these are really easy to take apart, there's like just like a little plastic clip on top, 
and that just unclips fairly easily. Just clip that off and you can just see how it's constructed. So each wire gets pushed down in between these sort of set of blades which cuts through the insulation and makes a connection. So it's a dead easy way to do a connection and it's just, it just seems to be a lot more reliable than the moulded ones which you know move around and are all soldered and stuff. This one just is a lot easier to work, it's sort of just a lot more reliable. So all I'm going to do is for each of these wires I'm going to take it out and feed it in from the other side. So it should be fairly easy, they should just pop out like that. You should be relatively careful obviously because I don't want to like bend the wires out of shape or anything but if we can just sort of carefully remove that 12 volt one. There we go. Sort of slowly wiggle it out. That's out. And then all I need to do is reverse it so it goes on the other side. I'm just going to do them one at a time because I don't want to then end up mixing up which, you know, which <laughs> pins they go in or anything. So if I only have one floating at any one time, it's a lot easier. I'm going to try and carefully use a screwdriver to feed it down, hopefully not damaging it too much. And then all I need to do is do the same with all the others. There we go. A little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Um, so now that's in there. I'm just going to do the same with all the other connectors. Okay, so I've now finished rewiring that, so you can see the, the connectors are going in from the other side. So all you need to do is just clip the plastic cap over, which is, just snaps on fairly easily. And let's see how this connects to the machine. So that connector will now go in that way, with the wires feeding nicely to the, towards the inside of the machine. And then this connector will go on there. And then we can just feed those wires around. So that's a lot neater, having it fed in that way. So that's what it'll look like in the end. Now obviously with this you do lose one SATA connector, the machine originally had three here, however the third one fed into this two and a half inch bay, and this bay doesn't actually even have any sleds in it, so you, like, it didn't even come with them. So even though it had a SATA power connector, there's no real way to mount a drive in this at all, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm happy just having the two connectors and leaving this bay completely empty. There's no point having a connector if you can't physically mount the drive into it. Now for the moment of truth, after installing these connectors, will the side panel still fit? Because obviously the side panel, side panel is quite close up against those connectors, as you can see there. But let's see if we put that down. Will it latch in? Yep. That's fine. So, good. We can now get on continuing with the modification. So now that we've got the new connector sorted, we can then work out how to mount the, how to connect this Molex up to the existing power. So, here we have these wires, which are all the original ones that we don't want anymore. I'm just going to cut this wire here to wire my new Molex connector on. So we sort of need a reasonable bit of length, but we don't want it too, like, tight so we probably want to cut it like maybe sort of here-ish. I also want to give myself enough slack so that if I muck up mounting the connector I can cut it off and try again further up so I don't want to like run out of cable. So I think sort of doing that there will be fine. Then we can just mount the Molex sort of around about here. So time to actually just obliterate the machine by cutting these wires which feels a bit scary but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, so here we go, cut these wires and then we can mount the new Molex connector. Like that, there we go. So that's it cut. And that's those new, those horrible old moulded Molex connectors that can go away. So we can get rid of those and mount the Molex to this. Okay, so I'll now attempt to show how to actually mount a Molex connector. It's a bit fiddly, I've already done the other three, so it's just the 5 volt one left. Um, also notice how Fujitsu have clearly used the finest quality aluminium cable here. So yeah, they've definitely cheaped out on this cable that powers the drives, because that's, you know, aluminium cable. It's like, yeah, bit, bit sketchy. It's fine, it'll work. At least if it's got connectors, it won't catch fire now. So, the way the Molex connector works is you've got each of these is like the receptacle the connector goes into. So, that bit goes into the actual, well, be what the actual connect, other connector plugs into. And this is where you mount the actual um, wire. So, what you do is you take the wire and you sort of feed it in so that the sort of bare bit of wire goes into, like there's these little two, bit, these bits that fold over. You put it so the metal bit goes into the first set of bits that folds over and the insulation goes into the other bit and then you just fold it over. Now you can buy proper crimping tools for this, but because I'm so I'm too cheap for that, I didn't buy any. So I instead just use a pair of pliers, so you can sort of crimp it over like that, fold over one side, then fold over the other side, right there, um, and then just crimp it down. And then that's the actual electrical contact made. So now you just need to fold over the insulation to hold it in, so that's fairly easy to do. You just fold over those bits at the end there, and at the other end there. And then once they're sort of all folded, just squeeze everything down really, really hard, just so it's all properly crimped in place. And there we go. So I'll just neaten that up a little bit, and we're now ready to mount the connector. So, yep, there we go. That 
is now the more it's connected and mounted. So what we now have is we have all four of these wires with these bits on the end. So now all we need to do is mount it into the actual wallet receptacle. So it's fairly easy to do. I'm just going to be relatively careful because I don't want to mix up the pinouts. So I'll just work and make sure I get the right way around or I'll do it wrong. That'd be incredibly frustrating. So, yeah, so it's like that way there. So get the right order. So we want 12 volts here. Go in there. Just clip straight in. The ground that goes next to 12 volts is this one here. So that just goes straight in there. Nice satisfying little click when it goes in. Um, I know this is where it differs for the order on the SATA connector. So we have the other ground goes in there. And then 5 volts goes in here. And there we go. So that's now the volts connector made up. And all we now need to do is plug those two together. And once these two connect together, which is always fiddly on Molex connectors because they're always a bit weird, but if we get them all <laughs> roughly lined up, um, we can um, power the drives. This does not want to connect together. Um, just fiddly. Um, let's just... I'll fight with this a little bit more and we'll get it connected. So I finally got that connector in. Just took a bit of wrestling. It's just typical Molex connectors. Especially when we've got two connectors on wires rather than having one on a drive. Trying to get the bits to line up is a complete pain, but got them in eventually. And I've now sort of mounted it here, so it's fairly neat. Just cable goes around. Doesn't look too bad at all. Doesn't really look like it's horrible bodge or anything. It's just all connected up. So that definitely now is at least a lot safer, hopefully. So I suppose the final thing is just fire it up and check all the drives get power and I don't blow the drives up or anything. So yep, yeah, time to test it and see what happens. So it's now time for the moment of truth. Let's fire it up and see what happens. So it switches off at the back. So on this machine, when you apply mains power, it spins the drive up and then switches off and then you turn it on. So when I power it on, it'll start hopefully spin the drives up. Then we'll boot it up and check all the drives are still detected. So see what happens. Definitely hear a lot of drives spinning up anyway, so that's a good sign. Okay, and then it powers off like normal. That's normal operation for this machine. Don't know why it does that, but it does. So if we turn it on, we'll see if it boots. So now just go into the BIOS here. I'm going to just go through here and check, see if we can find the drives. What, what I don't want to do is boot it up with two drives missing and have the RAID configuration go wonky. So I just want to check they're both detected. There we go. You can see that yep, there's all four hard drives detected. So that's good. So now if we escape out of that, you should hopefully be able to see it boot. I've reached the OS anyway, so the bootloader is definitely working. So all I'm going to do now is boot up and just check the ZFS pool, check that's happy, and then we'll be good to go. And it's booted, so that's a good sign. Okay, so the machine's booted up and it seems happy, so let's just check the ZFS pool status. So, Z pool status. There we go, it's listing all four drives in the RAID Z2, and they're all online. So. The modification's definitely been successful. So there you have it. The modification is now complete to remove these horrible old dodgy SATA connectors and replace them with sort of safe crimped ones. So yeah, pretty happy with that. It's fairly neat and it seems to work absolutely fine. And even though it's you know incredibly unlikely that this would suddenly burst into flames, it's good just to have the peace of mind that it's not in there at all. And now none of my machines have any SATA connectors like this, which is good. And it's just not nice having something that's you know running 24-7 unattended and knowing that it's got these things that do have a sort of potential known issue with them. And it's quite disappointing that Fujitsu would actually put these in, because this machine isn't that old. It's from 20, it was made in 20, like the very end of 2015, I bought it at the start of 2016. So by that point in time, the dangers of these sort of mouldy SATA connectors were already really well known. So it's a bit disappointing to see that they used these, but that's fine, they're gone now. And the machine's now got nice crimped SATA, crimped SATA connectors on, on all the drives. So yeah, thank you very much for watching.